change from kufr to iman. And there is loads of stories about companions who turned into Islam. Most of them were, all of them are kuffar. I don't think, to my knowledge, I have came across a radical disbelieving woman like Hind bint Utbah. If I was someone who was a contemporary of Hind and saw what she did, I would say to myself, this woman would never become a Muslim. You would be amazed, sisters and brothers. You would be amazed when you know that there was someone who said and thought that Umar ibn al-Khattab will not become a Muslim until a donkey becomes a Muslim. This is literal I'm quoting you literally. What someone, لا يسلم عمر حتى يسلم حمار عمر. Umar will never become a Muslim until his donkey becomes a Muslim. That's how people thought about Umar. Drinking, he drank. Beating, he was beating. Killing, he wanted to kill the Prophet. Salah Salah. Hint did things that I would never Imagine a woman would do, but she did it. Hind was a cannibal. Hind was able to chew liver, a liver of a human being. I don't want to disgust you, but you just imagine that you are watching her doing that. You don't have to know that it was the liver of Hamza. It's, it's enough to say that this was a liver of a human being. And a raw one, uncooked. If it was a, a liver of, I don't know, a chicken, you would, you would become disgusted. No, this is a human being. And it happens that it is the liver of Hamza. This woman changed. This woman changed. And she changed at, a, at, a, at an old age. Okay, so I want to dramatize to you. You see, I need to dramatize the original position for you to appreciate the change from that position. It's like telling you someone was a drug addict. For example, now he's a, a scholar uh, that raises awareness about drugs. You have to appreciate his life before he became a scholar. It's like watching a Malcolm X film. You have to watch the three quarters of the film, Malcolm X doing all sorts of things for you to appreciate this Malcolm X with a goatee beard that talks about racism and the segregation between white and black. And then in the last 10 minutes, where he goes to Mecca and becomes a proper Muslim. This is change. So you have to appreciate Hind. And to appreciate Hind when she was a Kafir, let me tell you a few things about her. First of all, Hind was one of the greatest enemy of Islam. When the battle of Badr ended, she realized that her father was killed, non-Muslims, her brother was killed, her uncle was killed. And Hamza, عنه, was the one that killed these members in the family. Look at the procedures that she took to articulate and to express her hate and anger. I want you to appreciate. I want you to appreciate how terrible she was. I need to do that very well for you to appreciate the change. First of all, she never cried. I want you to appreciate how solidified her heart was. You know why she didn't cry? Not because she didn't love them, but because she said, I would not want the news to reach Hamza, that he have broke my heart and that I am weeping and crying for the death of my father, brother, and uncle. Even of the level of Pleasing the enemy, she's not willing to do it. She's not willing to register this moment of tear so that it's not reported that Hend has cried. So as not to please. This is radical hate that I don't want you to enjoy a moment in your life. What's this? This is hate or what? Of course it's hate. Number two, she said to her husband, Abu Sufyan, Great companion, later, 
great companion, but at that time an un-Muslim. She said to him, I will never wash myself to you. I will never wash my hair to you. I will never wear any perfume to you until you wage another war against Muhammad and until you defeat him. I am aware of uh, someone like uh, the deceased uh, Yasser Arafat, for example, uh, that he said, uh, I will never sh shave uh, my beard uh, until uh, Palestine is liberated. And there are people who say, I'll never get married w w until whatever. I'd... But for a woman to ignore her femininity and to ignore her body and to, sorry to say the word, to bear, to be disgusting in such a hot desert weather, just because making this public statement that I am so angry and I will not return to my normal life until we kill Muhammad, this is something extreme, amazing. This is something extreme. And she would never have intimate relation with Abu Sufyan. And Abu Sufyan, whenever he comes closer to her, she said, until we defeat Muhammad. You want to enjoy this moment? Defeat Muhammad. What's the relationship between the bed and Muhammad? She made it an issue. She made it a case. You know what's amazing? Forget about the fact that she is a disbeliever. Imagine we have a believer that thinks in these terms. You know what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that those people were great even before they believed. This is a great woman. If I was not a Muslim or even if I'm a Muslim, this is a great woman. She has a case, she has a cause, she believes in that cause, she's willing to sacrifice everything for that cause, and she's lobbying and orchestrating campaigns. And she, on the battle of Uhud, uh, this was good news for her, she was among the few women that decided to go on the battlefield. There were four, only 15 women that decided to go. She was the first to register her name in this battlefield, to make sure that she will clap, that she will sing, that she will mobilize the forces, and that men will not retreat. That was her fourth cause. She was lobbying before the war. She was taking procedures even in her intimate life, lobbying for that war, and now she is in the process of the war itself. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this himma, look at this aspiration. The fifth procedure is that she asked Wahshi, who was a mushrik servant, to kill Hamza, and he succeeded in that, and that's, that's okay, in the sense that we know that. But she, after the battlefield, decided that she has to go and mutilate Hamza, as if death is not enough. Oh, yani Wahshi said to her, look, this is Hamza, I've killed him, are you sure? Yeah, me and you say, are you sure you, uh, he's dead? Okay, alhamdulillah, good, uh, uh, whatever. No, no, I want to actually go and take revenge from this man. This is a woman, by the way. This is not a man. I sometimes think a man would not even be able to do that. And, and fascinating. I, I said this to my mother again. I said, mother, can a woman do that? She says, yes, when a woman gets angry, she will do that. I am aware, I am aware in many Arab countries of women uh, chopping their husbands. And they brought an interview with this woman that they said, you know, you killed your husband. Why did you chop him and put him in this uh, dustbin bag? You know what she said? This was on, on air. She said, well, the, bo the body was just lying there. I thought the smell, you know, would ruin the, the house. So I had to chop him, put him in the bag and throw him. A woman, and I said to her, my mother, would she do that? She said, if you, you might be surprised, but you never know what the husband used to do to her. And if Hind was here, she would tell me, are you making fun of me? Saying that I'm a cannibal? You don't understand. What my father meant to me, what my uncle was to me, what my, my husband, I, I have childhood memories with my father. I'm not rationalizing cannibalism now. I'm not promoting it. What I'm saying is that you have to appreciate 
that when a woman is angry and she wants to engage in revenge, I don't think that gender becomes an issue here. It becomes about an angry human being. Okay, so please don't become angry at me. <laughs> and please, husbands, do not provoke your... Because dustbin bags are a lot these days in the kitchen. <laughs> so Hind did this. So she went to mutilate Hamza. And she wanted to do it by herself. So I don't want to again discuss you, but it's in the books of Sira. She went and opened the stomach. Uh, I, I don't want to, again, to, to, you know, I did A-level biologies. And one of the things that we used to do is to, shall I say it? You know it, d dissect rats. So you open the rat and this is the liver and we have to draw it and we have to label it. Uh, part of our assessment. And I was aware of some people who fainted in the lab when they were dissecting a rat. No, she is actually dissecting a human being. And not in a lab, not for A-level, not for GCSE, no. It's for revenge. And to make a point that, oh, Muhammad, come and see what has happened to your uncle. She took his ears out and threw it away. Some historians said she took his ears and made it into a necklace. This is when a woman wants to beautify herself. She cut his nose and threw it away. And she took the liver and ate the liver. And, you know, for obvious reasons, it was so she threw it away. Now, we don't want to uh, fantasize about stuff like this. But the point I'm trying to make is that I stopped for a while. And then I said, imagine now, visualize how will the face of Hamza look? Think about that. Think about the face of Hamza without ears, uh, without, they say, they say also historians that she put a pierce in uh, his mouth and started to play with it, play with it, play until the mouth. I mean, I don't think that any CNN or whatever would, would show this. Uh, it's disgusting. So much so that Sufyan, when he became a Muslim, he had to apologize for what she did. He said, wallahi, she did it behind my back. I wasn't aware of what my wife was up to and I didn't expect that I'm trying to dramatize the amount of anger that she had. So much so that one of the companions called Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at the face and said, who did this? They said, Ya Rasulullah, it's Hind. He said, whoever sees Hind, she should be killed. So wanted, dead or alive, Hind. Hind was a danger for Islamic national security. And when the sister of Hamza, Safiya, bint Abdul Muttalib, she is also the aunt of Rasulullah wanted to see the body, Rasulullah said to us, Zubair ibn al-Awwam or Abdullah ibn Zubair said to him, Safiya is coming. Uh, try to block her. Try to prevent her. It, it's, it's a very bad scene. And Abdullah ibn Zubair went and said, Auntie, please go. She said, I want to see Hamza. He said, I have orders from Rasulullah. Please go. She said, get out of the way. I want to see my brother. And Abdullah ibn Zubair straight away got out of the way. And went to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, she's insisting. Rasulullah said, okay, it's okay. Just let her have a look and, and that's it. So she went. And she looked at the face, and this is a sister, by the way. But uh, alhamdulillah, she didn't become like Hind, seeing her brother. I mean, she could have been like Hind. Wallahi, I will kill Hind, I will eat her liver. No, no. And this is where Islam comes into it. Yes, I, I hate her guts. But, uh, salam alaikum, sister. You know, there, there is manners. So she said, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And she came and she said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I saw Hamza, and I saw the situation, and inshallah, May Allah give me the ajr for my patience. And then she left. Okay, let's zoom the camera now into that person who is dead or alive, needed dead or alive. Hind, let's go. Where, where is Hind? Hind went, went back to, to, to Mecca. And she remained there as a non-Muslim until days, years passed and Rasulullah conquered and opened Mecca. Now Hind is watching from the window. And this is the turning point. I, I sometimes say to myself, if Hind was killed 
somehow by someone who said, who, who, who you know, wanted to obey a Rasulullah, she's needed dead or there alive, she would have not turned, she would have been killed. But it is as if Allah made her witness an incentive and an incitement that will create this turning point. She looked from her window and she saw the companions going round the Kaaba and making tawaf and praying the salah. We sometimes pray in the Hyde Park and you find tourists and you know people in Britain who would come and take a photograph. But that's it. That's it. Hind wasn't taking a photograph. Hind was watching and watching and watching. And then she looked at Abu Sufyan and she said to him, Inni uridu an utabi'a Muhammad. I want to follow Muhammad. Are you aware that Muhammad was the one that said that you should be dead? Yes. I want to believe in him. Are you aware that Muhammad was the one that actually orchestrated the death of your father, uncle, and her? Yes, 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 I am aware. But I, I want to follow Muhammad. Why? No lectures, no talks, no pamphlets, no leaflets. Nothing except seeing someone who prays. And she says, when she says to Abu Sufyan, I want to utab, I want to follow Muhammad, he said to her, She said, He said to her, Come on, you are the most person with animosity to Islam. What has happened to you? She said, Wallahi, I have been living in Mecca for years and years and years and years. This is the first time that I am seeing Allah being worshipped properly. That's what she said. Of course, worship properly because all what she have seen for the last 30, 40 years are naked people going around Kaaba and doing nothing except worshipping idols. Who, who, who will these people change and create ter- U- U-turns? You need companions of high quality. You don't need me. You don't need us. Allahu Akbar, Bismillah, Assalamu Alaikum. You don't need that. You need someone who prays properly and reads Quran in a melodious voice to be able to change the heart of Hind. Of a cannibalist woman. Can you see what prayers does to a human being? This is what prayers do. And then she went and she accompanied either Umar or Uthman. Historians disagree. And she covered her face so that Rasulullah would not know her immediately. And she went and said, Ya Rasulullah, I would like to become A Muslim. And he said, and who are you? And she took the niqab and she said, I am Hind. Of course there was a moment of shock. Of course there was a moment of anger. But this is Ar-Rasul, this is not me and you. He said to her, Marhaban bi Hind. Welcome Hind. Welcome. And Hind said what? Said a fascinating statement. She said, with this welcome, welcome, Hind. She said, by Allah, messenger of Allah, there was no person dwelling on the face of the earth whose family I wished to see dead or abased more than your family. Now, today, you turn. Now, today, there is no person dwelling on the face of the earth whose family I wished to see exalted more than your family. It's, it's a fascinating change, isn't it? It's a radical change. Okay, this is Hind disbelieving, cannibalism. This is Hind transforming. Now let's see Hind in action as a Muslim. Let's see the third now change. Many incidents about Hind, but just to see what she did in one battle, the battle of Yarmouk. The Muslims were fighting against their enemies. Believe it or not, Hind was doing the same thing that she was doing in the Battle of Uhud. In the Battle of Uhud, she was clapping. In the Battle of Uhud, she was doing poetry. You know what was the poetry that she was singing in the Battle of Uhud? She's talking to the men now. She say, this is the poetry. If you advance, we hug you. Spread soft rugs beneath you. If you retreat, we leave you. Leave and no more love you. 
This was the poetry of Hind. Well, I have got news for you. This was the same poetry that Hind was saying to the Muslims in Yarmouk. Which, if anything, shows that a fascinating person is always fascinating. A great person is always great. All what happens is that he or she takes his talents, her talents, and transforms them into a new channel in service of Islam. And when the army was retreating, uh, she was shouting, and she was saying, إِلَىٰ أَيْنَ تَنْهَزِمُونَ إِلَىٰ أَيْنَ تَفِرُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَجَنَّتِهِ SubhanAllah. She's saying now to the Muslims, why, 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 where are you running? Where are you going? Are you running away from the enemy? Or are you wearing, running away from Allah and his Jannah? I think if Hind was living with us today, she would have been labeled as a terrorist. But the point was that she was lobbying and she was campaigning. Allah sees you, so do not retreat and do not run away. Who is doing this? Men? No, women. And Abu Sufyan and the men that was retreating after they heard this, they came back and they began to fight and they won the war.